This is WCAU TV Channel 10, Philadelphia. And it is time now for the WCAU Afternoon News with Peter J. Wiggins, Wednesday, January 2nd, 1952. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Peter Wiggins, and here's what's happening. Reliable City Hall sources in Chester today predicted that Captain Roy Seaman will be appointed chief of the Chester Police Department. He will succeed Andrew J. Desmond Jr., who is appointed of the chief deputy prison warden of the Broad Meadows prison was disclosed Tuesday. Those same reliable sources expressed confidence that Sergeant Edward F. Redsman Choir as the vice squad will succeed Seaman as Captain and Detective Leander Greeny Tessoni will be elevated as sergeant. Phoenix, Arizona. A uh, cowboy was to lead a mountain rescue party to look up mountain today to recover the bodies of 28 people including 19 West Point cadets killed in a crash of a C-47 transport plane. Officials of Williams Air Force Base said that the rescue teams would be climbed at a crash scene on horseback led by Arnold Johnson, a cowboy who reached the wreckage Tuesday and reported that everybody is dead. Bodies of the victims would be carried to a world three to four miles from the spot where the plane smashed into the face of Lookout Mountain with a terrific crash. Rescue planes that had searched the mountains here, here since the Air Force plane disappeared Sunday spotted the wreckage of the peak Tuesday. The C-47 crashed into the rocky Craig near the top of the mountain, about 65 miles northeast of Phoenix. What more than 60 planes carried on the search from the air. Johnson's wife saw what she was thirst fought was a bed sheet on the mountainside. She studied it throughout field classes and told Johnson it might be the wreckage of the missing transport plane. President Truman in Washington today ordered a sweeping reorganization of the Internal Revenue Bureau, including the abolition and offices of all 64 internal revenue collectors. The chief executive announced that the action is a series of a first of a measures to be rid of its government of corrupt officials and direct treasury secretary standard to proceed immediately with the reorganization plan. Six internal revenue collectors have been fired or quit under fire as a result of the series of tax scandals of Bared by a special house committee headed by Representative King, Democrat of California. In addition, nearly 59 of our Internal Revenue Service officials have been dismissed or received to be required to resign because of the disclosures of widespread bribery, graft, and other forms of corruption. In Parmesan, Korea, the United Nations agreed today to a communist demand for the release of all war prisoners during an armistice, but only under a complex compromise formula. The UN previously had held out for a straight man form an exchange which would have left more than 104,000 and 116,000 communist prisoners in Allied hands after all 11,559 Allied prisoners had been released. The new UN proposal provides for the release of all war prisoners and civilian internees held by both sides and would be obliged to the communists and free 50,000 and 70,000 captured South Korean troops inducted into the Red Army. armies. Adobe Township man Albert Wade, 75, who lived on Hook Road, was killed in an automobile Monday night in Ashland, New Jersey, near Camden. The body was fired Tuesday by Wade's sister-in-law, Miss Susie Wade, of 217 Chestnut Street in Camden. Police said the man walked in the front of a car driven by Herbert Ross, 22 of Stephen Street, near 2nd in Camden. Darby Township Police said that Wade was not married and had not been employed for a number of years. The 1952 March of Dimes Drive opens in Delaware County today, but on looking deficit financing. For four years, the National Foundation of Vital Paralysis has gone in the red in its fight against the only epidemic disease still on the increase in America, as the county chapter has sought to do its darndest to put the fight as a pay as you go basis. During the past four years, the nation has experienced its worst political years in history. John G. Pugh, Jr., director of the Delaware County March of Dimes campaign, said today the general public may not realize this because polio cases have been widely distributed in the revenue and concentrated in specific areas. However, 1951 was the fourth consecutive year in which NFIP had to go in and to pay for the care of polio patients. The estimated deficit at the end of 1951 was $5 million. Pugh declared the 1952 March of Dimes will therefore be mortgaged to this demand before any money can be set aside for scientific research. The Korean War made this holiday season a very unhappy one for Mrs. Vera Grubsky of 321 7th Street. Within two days, Mrs. Grubsky received the word that her son, John, is missing an accident and that the body of her favorite nephew in Minersville, Pennsylvania, will be brought home for burial this week. Isn't that amazing? I think I take care of him like he's my very own. Boss Rangers today bundled against the cold to bring food and warm clothing in a motor strip by a Rocky Mountain avalanche while Sevenders bask in a record breaking New Year's heat wave. Women and children were among those bleeds maroon in a highway maintenance camp one mile west of the summit of the Wolf Creek Pass in Clara after what's what is called the Southwestern area's worst avalanche in history.
The mortars were moved after the worst storm and in winter closed mountain passes for nearly two days and cut off small towns. Our rescue crews using the snow pods in World War II mine detectors searched for two missing truck drivers believed buried with their truck under hundreds of tons of snow and debris in the past. Elsewhere in the nation, bad weather was a contributing factor in the six known air crashes in which 63 died. Three of our planes carrying the 13 persons were missing. But a freakish mid-winter heat wave told the Dixie where temperatures topped previous highs. Residents of Atlanta and Georgia celebrated New Year's by playing golf and tennis and sunbathing. The Mercury hit 75 degrees at the top of previous highs, 69 said in 1880. It's a very important job. It's a job. It's a commitment. Moscow, the Kremlin announced today the death of old Bolshevik Maxim Limonov, former ambassador to the United States and Britain, and one famous an advocate for collective security against aggression. Limonov, 75, was a consistent exponent and finally a symbol of the Soviet relations with the Western democracies. His prominence was considered as accurate bad barometer of Soviet relations with the Western democracies. The Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs that said that Lunov died last Monday. There was no examination of the explanation regarding the two-day delay in it. Not in a death of no effort was made to explain the cause. The Kremlin said merely after Lunov died after a long illness. He had been a almost total eclipse since 1946 when he was relieved of the less official Soviet assignment. Leninov recognized the Russian prominence under the leadership of Lenin when he first served as a pistol executive shortly after the 1917 revolution. In Washington. What did he do? Nothing. Senator Robert A. Taft's campaign manager claimed growing strength in the Ohio presidential candidate today in Eisenhower territory. The claim came from David S. Ingalls, Taft's campaign director, in the first of a series of months of planned reports to the progress of the drive to win the 52 Republican presidential nomination for the Ohio senator. While making no specific claims to convention, delegates from states once deemed unfriendly, Ingalls asserted that the early start in Taft's campaign has made such headway that his nomination on an early ballot now seems a certainty. Bob Tapp is making a great stride in states in which he previously had been little support. Ingalls said the task grew and strengthened in states like New York, Pennsylvania, and Kansas is surprising even the most of its ardent supporters. Tapp kept recently has been world war up to the bit hard. It's chance of winning some convention votes from the big delegation from Pennsylvania and New York. These are the home states that Senator James H. Duffin, Governor Dewey, two of the leaders of the GOP faction, seeing to win the nomination of a Governor General Dwight D. Eisenhower, Kansas is Eisenhower's home state. Claims that a growing tap strength in New York were met by the counterclaims from the Eisenhower partisans that the delegation will be almost solely for the five star general. Pennsylvania, which was torn by a GOP factional struggle in 1950, may be a battleground state. Duff is prepared to fight the rival leaders of the state GOP organization views to go along with the Eisenhower. Ingalls was apparently mindful of the handicaps faced by the Eisenhower campaign organization because of its candidates as carrying out a military assignment in Europe and his main no announcement of political intentions. The annual reorganization meeting of the Manufacturing Association in Delaware County will be held at the Hotel Clubhouse Thursday, January 10th at 12.30 p.m. The nomination committee headed by Harrison F. P. Dunning and including Everett Kent, Ellie McIntyre, Hans Bielen, and Annie Harper Harbersat as submitted a ticket and ballots have been mailed to members. Okay. Members may vote to the other candidates that is appearing on the ballot by writing names on blank spaces provided to the ballots. These are named below the 10. The meeting may be proxy for as the votes to be cast for the directors nominated. Proxies were in tasks where the ballots and mailing proxies must be returned to the association office in the Crozer Building, 5th and Market and not later than noon on January 10th. Yeah. A Democratic congressman from Ohio and Washington said today that the President Truman had told him the hopes and announced the political intention for 1952 before February 6th deadline for filing the new Ohio Democratic primary. Representative Wayne L. Hayes, Democrat of Ohio, discussed the final political situation at some length with his chief executive and said that he was asked him directly if he was ready to say whether he won again. Hayes will support Senator Esther Kavap for his Democrat intensity for the 1952 Democratic presidential nomination if Mr. Truman decides to not to run. Hayes said the president told him he is not ready to announce his intentions. The congressman said he asked Mr. Truman for some definite information in advance of the February 6th deadline in Ohio by which time delegates to the Democratic convention must file. While delegates to the convention win, Fallon must take their first and second choice of a president unless they support a native son. Hayes pointed out these choices may be stated only with a written consent of the prospective presidential candidate. I applied in about five minutes. Okay, on to the weather. Cloudy, mild this afternoon for the Delaware Valley with occasional rain, and then late tonight and Thursday, cloudy and colder. Conseil Brown reviews the West East struggle during 1951. If you're looking to and last-minute news. In Washington, Chairman Johnson, Democrat Colorado, the Senate Commerce Committee, said today that he's ordered a staff investigation in the C-46 plane crash which killed 26 persons near Salmon in New York. If you're not an Washington, the Supreme Court agreed today to rule on the constitutional part of the McCarran and 
Channel security app dealing with the deportation documents will be scheduled soon and later that I beat you hand down with an opinion. In Berlin, two American soldiers were held by the Russians for 16 hours when they two German girls they drove into the Soviet occupation zone by mistake when found by the army today. The that couple's call that folks of Stockport, Ohio and Robert J. Denon of St. Paul, Minnesota. The soldiers were said that the girls said they were all treated. Right now, our current conditions at first the one o'clock hour, 48 degrees of temperature at Philadelphia, 48 in Northeast, 48 in Trenton, and 50 in Washington, Wilmington, Delaware. And that to be the WCAU Afternoon News for this January 2nd, 1952 on a Wednesday. I'm Peter Woods. Have you a good, good day, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye, buddy.